Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and finally you can see in the background that I have uh, put up my ASL collection of boxes in my bookshelf, where I was previously we were able to um, pick a side corner, sorry, this corner, there's just books, and right behind my head would be a combat commander, we finally uh, accomplished something in terms of storage, uh, but we still have more to go. ASL for you. Peace. There's no end to it. Um, so what's the topic of today's video? The topic of today's video, as you can see, can see, is ASL starter kit scenario 26. Last ally, last victory, uh, 10th of October 1944 in Hungary. Why is that an important date? Well, after Stalingrad 1942, everything starts going down where the uh, Axis invasion of Russia. Uh, uh, Russia is on the advance. It has reached Hungary and all these um, the satellite uh, countries now being occupied by the Soviet forces and it's the beginning of the collapse of the uh, the Axis forces. Uh, so this scenario depicts uh, one such, such case where um, the Soviets have uh, established themselves in a village and the Germans are counterattacking to retake some building locations. And in this particular scenario, the Axis win, uh, the Germans win at end, game end, if they control nine or more um, building hexes. Now, there's a couple of um, um, points that I want to mention, both from the German and Russian perspective. At least five that I'm going to give you. I'll help you play a better game. Now, um, having said that, I can tell you for a fact that I lost the game both uh, both ways. And uh, just because you lost the game doesn't mean you're better or worse than anybody else. Um, there is a big element of luck, and uh, your opponent is ro rolling twos and threes. There's not much you can do about that. Take it in stride and um, preserve your, 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 your smile and dignity and save your good humor for another day. Keep on rolling. That's all you can do. You're either enjoying, you're enjoying the game or you're not. Anywho, as you can see, the um, Germans face a, a big dilemma here because they have two groups of combined arms. Um, and they have to choose between um, whether they send element A in or element B. So element A is elements of the first Panzer division where here at least you have a good eight, nine, 10, 11 multi-man counters, uh, four leaders, a slew of weapons and only three tanks, but the tanks have um, 15 movement points. And the little star in front of it means that, in front of the movement points, means that it might suffer delay if you stop. Uh, what's important to note is that they have a self-defense weapon. I can also sh uh, serve as a smoke discharger. And you have to add plus one to your, your smoke discharge roll if you are discharging it well buttoned up. No big deal. Okay. Now, on the other end, on the other end of the map board, I believe this is the west edge, you have uh, a couple of uh, King Tigers and a couple of Panzer IVs, I believe. Uh, and ma mainly the, the role of the Panzer IV is to protect the flanks of, of the King Tigers. And you have a less sizable um, of multi man counters. Now, when you look at all the overall um, map, it, it does say that you have to um, capture 
uh, nine, nine buildings of the German player, and there is some low-lying fruit. So let's uh, go ahead and, and circle that uh, low-lying fruit. Let's see, where is my mouse pointer here? Over there it is, nice big blue. And um, we'll pick a color. And we can pick a color this way. Pink? Well, let's see. Uh, all right, so low-lying fruit, because they're very close to your debarkation points or point of embarkment. Here's one, two, three on one side. And then uh, just below that, just below that, you got another uh, two here for a total of five. Let's, let's clean up the board here. Let's see. Trash. So, got one, two, three, four, five that you can grab um, perhaps rather easily. And then you'll need another four that are somewhere along here. Let's trash that as well. There we go. Okay. Um, now, as the Russian player, you are starting. We're starting with uh, two troops that are confined to a, a, a particular area, and my advice to you there is set them up in such a way that they can um, go back to uh, the village as quickly as possible. Leaders with DC charges are very lethal. Because uh, they don't need to pass a patsy in order to um, get into uh, close combat with uh, your enemy tanks. And you can blow up tanks for using DC charges. There's a special procedure that uh, is done. Very straightforward. It's in the Starter rulebook. There you go. Now, just because the, the, this group of infantry is, is isolated there doesn't mean you can't set up um, your 57L uh, AT gun in such a way that you can ambush your enemy. Now, keep in mind that, um, and I've said this before, that basically what can occur is um, If you set up in open ground, you have to reveal the hip location of that uh, of that AT gun. But if you set up in concealment terrain, yeah, you don't have to reveal it until you get a, a good shot. And basically, what I have found is that I uh, set up my AT gun alongside those guards, six to eights in such a way that I can deliver a backhand blow once the tanks advance. But um, you can also certainly try to uh, put up on high ground. So once everything is, once your opponent tries to go for the gusto, they're there and they can fire as well. It's up to you, but point number one, is as the Russian player set up your 57L for an ambush and a rear shot because you won't get much trying to uh, put a dent in the front end of a of a Panzer. Now, as the German player, um, no matter which side you decide to employ, um, you're going to start out off on you're going to start your turn in the rally phase. The first thing you do in the rally phase is decide uh, where your uh, reinforcements or your troops are going to come in. Um, what I did to lose as the Germans, I believe, was I started all the way back here. Um, and as you can see, let's put a nice blue color for the Germans. If it allows me to do so. Oh, there it is. Okay, as you can see, starting all the way back here, you have a lot of ground to cover. Now, you might make it here, here. I'll give you four 
um, uh, four buildings, okay? Um, and you might be able to push everybody back. Uh, keep in mind that the Russians are going to come in from Russian tank reinforcements are going to come in here. Um, right. So if that gives you four second, then the other group will have to capture another well, three. That's seven plus two if you're lucky in here. Ow. Let's trash those little annotations and try to picture this. Come in through as quickly as possible to this area here. So let me put uh, some annot more annotations. So you come in and try to uh, blast your way through here. Uh, while your tanks are, um, you've got three tanks, so you try to bring them in in such a fashion that they'll cover this and this, okay? Of course, in my particular uh, situation, what, uh, what uh, my opponent did to, to Counter that was set up those tanks here, and by doing that, we got six opportunities to knock these guys out. Now, add a couple of light machine guns and a couple of squads. Six plus two or three makes nine. And how many squads do you have here? You got one. Four, five, six, seven, eight, plus three is eleven. So right off the bat, um, you know, that's a big risk. So in that case, if you do have a situation where these guys pop up, um, you might want to advance your your tanks first, pop smoke, and try to make take these guys out with bounding fire. Okay. Now, um, the other thing that's important to note is that these guys are impenetrable. They're very, very tough to to uh, knock out. But if you don't use your uh, accompanying armor to um, to guard the flanks, you're toast. Simple as that, okay? So let's recap. Russians, set up your 50, 57L for an ambush, a rear shot. Germans, assault as close to the objectives as possible. If there is a lot of, uh, of, of uh, potential fire in the first turn, use your tanks uh, to discharge smoke and allow for an advance. They have here, these Panthers, they have 50 movement uh, points. You bring them to this line and pop smoke. You've negated their attack. And then um, you have to uh, make sure that they get hull hits and the 76L, Russian 76L, two kill number, is questionable. And then um, that means, you know, that means that uh, the Russian will have to get lucky in order to win. Um, important to note as well that the Russian tanks, they have a B-11, which means that uh, they can quickly break down and lose uh, ammo. But if you can bring these guns to bear on the infantry, never mind the, the tanks, rain all your firepower on the infantry, okay? Because... That's again my actually my fourth point. AFEs cannot capture or control buildings, only multi man counters uh, can. So, your big, biggest enemy here, you would think that it's these boys up here, but in reality, 
It's the multi Jordan multi man counters because only these guys can achieve their objective. Okay. Um, circling back to to the Russian A AFBs, remember you got here uh, four eighty five Ls with a movement points of of sixteen. The lowest the lowest uh, movement point factor is thirteen for the these big boys over here. You're still you can still outmaneuver the um, uh, the Germans. So point number two for the Russians is use motion to your advantage. And point to counter that as a German player, keep in mind something called motion attempt. So basically, um, let's say you have, what is motion attempt, right? You got a tank face in this, in this direction. And then um, somehow, what's going on is that um, the Russian army decides to go for a rear shot. Point one, two. The German is is saying, "What is going on?" Three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, stop. You got a rear shot. So what you can do is uh, do a motion attempt. It's a 1d6. And you have to roll lower than the amount of moon points that uh, you expended in, in your line of sight. You go like this and you can turn around and also leave your vehicle in motion. Now he's facing a bigger armor factor than before. That's one motion attempt. Um, for the Germans, again, keeping um, keeping in mind that infantry is the biggest enemy, if you got a, a tank going up against infantry, um, and the reason why you want to get rid of them is because if you they don't, show info. Here, so clockwise. There you go. Reason why, if you don't, is that let's put the guy with the LMG here. You, if you don't get rid of them, how's this fellow going to move closer to the victory location? And remember, if if uh, this guy just moved there, he's not a hindrance, right? Not a hindrance to this fellow. They can easily get a a um, a four down two shot. So what you do here is called bounding fire. You stop, and you fire on these boys with your LMGs, halved and doubled. It would be an eight up one. Let's go and see what happens. I rolled twice. I don't know why, but that's a pin result. So at least you would pin him. So um, yeah. Now, as the Russian uh, player. Skulking is a is a good idea. Uh, you you probably can't skulk with a medium machine gun, but with the LMG, um, I can tell you for a fact that uh, both my opponent and myself, when we're playing this game, um, and let's say we have a LMG here, we were dancing back and forth between this building, dancing back and forth between here and there. Willing to deny your uh, uh, your opponent a good opportunity to defensify or and break you, skulk. Okay. Another thing that's important to note is that uh, leaders are elite. Okay, leaders are elite. What does that mean? You got a seven zero leader here, and arm him with a DC charge. That tank is coming in, and uh, let's say you're. Your opponent says, ah, what, what is a 7-0 leader going to do? What he's going to do is reaction fire. When you stop your, your tank anywhere close to him, um, he can un unload that DC charge on you during his next phase. And what are you going to do? Okay, skulking. Leaders are elite. Um, the fourth one 
I'm going to reiterate what I just told you before is that AFVs cannot capture buildings. So these boys are the queen of the battlefield in this game. All the MMCs. You can do a, a, a song and dance with your armored fighting vehicles, but they can only control a building hex, but not a building. So if you want to win as the Germans or as the Russians, keep in mind that the most valuable piece on this chessboard is the multi-man counter, whether it be a half squad or a full squad. Number five. Number five is something that I have to keep always remembered. Um, here's the deal, okay? Let's say this building is captured, but you left behind a... Um, a Russian MMC, and you try to capture this building. This boy just comes into here, one, two, three, and then four, five, and he captures two more buildings. Bang. So try and leave a, a rear guard if you can. I'm going to recap all the points that I mentioned. Number one, set up your 57 double L as the Russian for an ambush. For the German number one is assault close to the objectives. Russian number point number two, uh, and it could this could also be for, well for the uh, Germans, but use the the superior motion points on your AFVs to their advantage to get into the German rear. On the German side to counter that, you can opt for motion attempt. Look it up in the rule book and bounding fire to break uh, through the Russian infantry. For number three, for the Russians, is Skalk. Do it if you can do it. For Germans, and the Russians actually, leaders are elite, and they can use special weapons without penalties, and advance into close combat with armored fighting vehicles without the necess necessarily taking a patsy. There you go. Point number four. AFEs can't capture buildings. So keep in mind that your infantry is the queen of the battlefield in this scenario. Number five. Don't forget to leave a, a rear guard both as the Germans and as the um, Russians. Because if you don't, and there's a nearby infantry unit, an opposing infantry unit, you'll see your victory uh, slip by say goodbye at a drop of a dime. Some tactics uh, helped, and uh, I, I hope you also enjoyed the bagpipes. And uh, so sometimes I, I have to leave it out because I, I do the uh, video on my phone and then upload it directly to YouTube. It's much faster. And sometimes a better quality video because using an old laptop and it's not really an old laptop it's just a laptop so what can i do not much anywho guys this was my video for the week and uh i hope you enjoyed it um do like and subscribe and tell your friends about it um pretty much it and again uh, the channel has grown much to my surprise we're close to 960 subscribers really going strong so if you um tell your friends and neighbors about it i appreciate it greatly thank you so much Take care